you know, I'm so excited to be in a position here to uh, introduce to Red Hawk Nation uh, Rick Ray. And, and the thing that really impressed me um, outside of talking to him on the phone, and he being a, a Kansas City guy, you know, so and again, that's, uh, that, that's something that's going to help me out here. But, um, but what really impressed me is just hearing how interested he was to come here to Southeast Missouri State University and how interested that he was to be able to make this place a winner. He knows that we, he knows that we can do it here at Southeast Missouri State University. But more importantly, when we sat down, Brady and I talked to him, you know what, he was, he was very impressive. But I'll tell you what, what really took me over the edge, you know, leading up to these decisions was when I received a, uh, a phone call from Scott Strickland who's the athletic director of Mississippi State University. And we spent about 20 to 30 minutes on the phone talking about you know, Rick Ray in terms of what he was able to do at Mississippi State, in terms of what he had inherited and the progress that he made, okay, in terms of changing the culture, in terms of cleaning up issues, cleaning up problems. And that program is going to be well on its way, which we're, which we're excited about. So, Outside of that, you know, we're bringing a, a great family. You know, I had a, had a brief chance to meet uh, Brianna, and I know that uh, she spent time with my wife, Kate, you know, checking out the, uh, the, the area. And then you have uh, Deacon and Mason here with us, uh, with us today. And, and you know what, to be able to add folks like this, it's impressive. Because one thing that really impressed me, another thing I should say that really impressed me was, as, as everyone know here, it's all about work-life balance. You know, my family means a lot to me. And Rick's family means a lot to him, which again, we talk about fit, and we talk about fit in this community, in this region, and he having the ability to understand what it takes to be a head coach and how involved that his family is going to be in this community is, is impressive. He came here for the reason why I came here. Number one, we both talked about potential. Man, the potential of this place is unlimited, okay? And the potential of this place has become more unlimited based on the commitment from Dr. Dobbins and also our, our Board of Regents, which I'm so grateful for. But then the second thing that caught me was he talked about community. He understands you know, what this community is all about. And I told him it's a great place to, to raise a family. And it, trust me, as you guys know it is, and he's excited about raising his family here. So again, enough about, uh, uh, about uh, me doing the introduction. But again, I'm so excited to introduce our, our 20th head coach here at uh, Southeast uh, Missouri State University, Rick Ray. Amazing, they were able to go out and find a hat quickly enough, big enough in my head there. <laughs> um, first and foremost, uh, I, I want to go back and I want to talk about one thing here. Um, for me, um, going to the Final Four there, um, we're checking into the hotel, and um, Deacon, uh, my son, who was four years old, um, we get up to the front counter there, and um, I'm getting ready to check in, and I could hear my son. Um, saying to my, uh, my wife real loudly, hey, when is dad going to get a job? <laughs> it's been a while now. When is dad going to get a job? And as I'm handing my credit card over <laughs> to the hotel registration clerk, they're a little hesitant about checking that, <laughs> that visa card there. So uh, I just want to announce now that to my son Deacon, I do have a job now. <laughs> um, just going through it, I want to thank a couple of people here. First of all, uh, I want to thank my lovely wife, Brianna Ray. Um, Brianna's, uh, she ran track at Penn State. Everybody always asks, do I want my kids to grow up and be athletic like me? And I'm, I'm no, no. I want them to be like my wife. <laughs> my wife was way more athletic than me. So um, being a coach's wife is the hardest job that you can have uh, in professional basketball. And then also you talk about what's going on 
with the moves. I believe this is her fourth move in seven years, and she's handled all um, with uh, class and, and done a really good job there. So, um, and she always talks about, for me, all I th think about is basketball, basketball, basketball. That's all I think about, and it's, and it's really not true. And, and I think, wh what have we been together for, like eight seasons now? It started back in, in, in 2012 at, at Purdue. Yeah, yeah, eight seasons. So I don't think about just things in terms of basketball. It's not true at all. <laughs> um, I, I really want to thank um, President Dobbins. Um, I, I came down and had an opportunity to sit down and meet with him. And, and just to say that he was impressive would be an understatement. Um, you can tell that he has a vision uh, for Southeast Missouri State. And I know he's an outgoing president, but you look and go look at his bio the accomplishments that he's made and the improvements that he made, not just in athletics, but as campus, uh, is really impressive. So I sat down and I talked to him, and you could tell that he had a supreme vision for the basketball program, for the athletic department, and as a university as a whole. And, and I always had interest in Southeast Missouri State as soon as it opened up. Uh, I grew up in Kansas City, and I've recruited a lot of areas um, that are close to Southeast Missouri State. When I was at Indiana State, which is two hours away from St. Louis, I recruited St. Louis a lot. Um, when I was at Purdue, I had the state of Illinois, so I recruited Illinois a lot. Uh, just being over in Starfield, Mississippi, at Mississippi State, which is just two hours away from Memphis, I recruited Memphis. So I've always known that Southeast Missouri State has a chance to be a really good program. And so I had the interest initially, but when I sat down, and I met with the athletic director, Mark Allnut. I came away knowing that this is a job that I needed because he has a vision and he believes that Southeast Missouri State can be successful. And in order for us to be successful, we have to have a synergy between myself, the athletic director, and the president. And I feel strongly about these two men, and that's the reason why I'm here. Southeast Missouri State, I believe, is a great school, but unless you have the right leaders in place, which I believe we do, then we have a chance to be successful. So really want to thank you for bringing me to Southeast Missouri State. The next thing I want to talk about is the reason why Southeast Missouri State. And I think Southeast has three things that are unique to make it successful in Ohio Valley Conference. The first thing is this arena that we're in. I think this is a fine facility. And as I sit here and they talk to me about the improvements they're going to make here in the offseason with the scoreboard and the seating and the renovations already to a facility I think is one of the top facilities in the Ohio Valley Conference, that means that we have a chance to show all things. Unfortunately, basketball has become an arms race. Everybody's trying to build up to be bigger and better. And now with the facility we have and the enhancements that we make, we can showcase something to the recruits when they set foot on campus. Uh, the next thing is the proximity to high school talent. With the fact that we're just two hours away from St. Louis, three hours away from Memphis, and we have the southeast area in between those two destinations to go out and recruit quality high school kids to come to southeast Missouri State, to me is something that's really important. As everybody knows, recruiting is the lifeblood of any program. And to me, when you're talking about getting somebody to come to Southeast Missouri State, it's much like selling a home. You're not going to sell your home unless you get foot traffic. Somebody has to come into your home and physically see the home in order for them to buy it. So to me, with the fact that we have the proximity to quality recruits, they can get here and they get a chance to see what we have to offer now they can come to Southeast Missouri State. So I think that's really important. And, and then the third thing for me, if you talk about what's the next step, it's the step of Cape Girardeau. Cape Girardeau is a town that now has amenities. It's funny, our last two places that we've been in Starkville, Mississippi and Clemson, South Carolina, we didn't have the amenities. So as we were driving through town, we got excited because we saw a Target. <laughs> we saw an Outback Steakhouse. We saw a mall, and we just got giddy. It says, like, we don't have to drive 45 minutes to go to Sam's. We can just go down the street and get to those things. So the amenities that this town has, Cape Girardeau, is a place that we can raise our family and feel safe and secure about what's going on um, with our family. So I, I just think that this, when I talk to people about the job here at Southeast Missouri State, they said it's a sleeping giant, a sleeping giant. 
And I think we have to make sure that we do everything we can to make that come to fruition. Uh, I want to thank one more person here. I want to thank Coach Nutt and, and his coaching staff. I just got done meeting with those young men in the locker room. And you can tell that they've recruited quality student athletes. Those guys looked me in the eyes. They paid attention. They were hanging on to every word that I was saying. And I told them, no one signed up for what you guys are going through. And if anybody has empathy for what that team is going through, I do, because I just went through it at Mississippi State. And one of the great quotes that they have is from John Wooden. John Wooden said, don't whine, don't complain. Make the most of your situation. And I want those guys to know that we want them to be a part of this program. The way you get young men to come to your university is through relationships. So they built relationships with the previous coaching staff. And so now those relationships have been severed. And it's now my time to make sure that we repair those relationships. The most important thing that we have is to make sure our guys on our basketball understand that we need to make sure we have relationships in order for us to move forward. And it starts by us being honest with each other. The number one rule in my program is tell the truth. And it's the hardest rule to keep. And it's not just the players telling me the truth, it's me telling the players the truth. And so if you want to build a trust factor, if you want to build a relationship, the number one thing you must have is trust. So we'll start working diligently to improving those relationships that I don't have with the players at this point in time. I told them, I introduced them to my family right away. I said, you will be coming out here and having very uncomfortable lunches and dinners with my family. One on one, you'll be sitting next to Deacon and you'll be sitting next to Mason and Mason will be throwing food on you and you got to sit there and you got to take it. <laughs> because we want to make sure that our guys understand that this is a family. And in order for us to be a family, we got to go outside the boundaries. You got to come to my home. We got to go out to Taco Bell and have some lunch. We got to make sure we're not just always talking about basketball. Because my job as a coach here at Southeast Missouri State is to develop. It's the number one thing, develop players. And the development of players doesn't just happen on the court, it happens off the court too. One of the biggest reasons I got into college coaching is I wanted to be a mentor to these young men. There's a stat out that 71%, 71 of men's college basketball players at the Division I level grow up in a single parent home. And, and so the first time they have authority from a male figure is a lot of time in coaching, whether it be in, in t-ball, whether it be in peewee football, whether it be in high school basketball, high school football. And so it's a situation to them, I got to make sure that we build a relationship so they understand that I am looking out for them, OK? Um, we're going to quickly put together a top-notch staff. Once things became public, I started talking to people behind the scenes. And I'm going to be fair to the current coaching staff here. We're going to sit down and we're going to have meetings and we're going to talk and we're going to discuss about what's the best thing for me, what's the best thing for the team, what's the best thing for Southeast Missouri State. Because we want to make sure if there's somebody here that's on the current staff that has the same vision that I have, then let's see if we can make it work. All right? And it may not work. I can't promise that we're keeping anybody. I can't promise that we're going to keep all three. But I want to make sure that I sit down and have discussions with the coaching staff and give them a fair opportunity to see if this is something that can work. And, and to me, I, I tell our staff this, and it's something that I stress with Mark, we're going to operate our program with the utmost integrity and character. It, it's the most important thing that we have as far as like what we do on a recruiting trail. If we got to do something beyond the lines in order for to get a young man to come to Southeast Missouri State, then don't recruit him. We're going to do things, we're going to handle it with integrity, we're going to do things the right way. I have a reputation of doing it that way. I've never had a hint of improprieties, not even a secondary violation, because to me, it's how I carry myself and it's the way I want to be thought of. And so we'll make sure we'll have those discussions, and we will put together a quality staff that you guys will be excited about. We want to make sure we go get some guys that can recruit the area, proximity. If there's a young man 
that's good enough to play in Ohio Valley Conference, that's in our radius, that's in our recruiting circle, that's in our recruiting footprint, we want him coming here to Southeast Missouri State. We got to make sure we put all efforts into doing that. Um, the next thing we want to talk about is like, I want this place out here packed. I know this is a long standing tradition of Southeast Missouri State back in the day of how well attended the basketball games were, how raucous of a crowd it was, the environment, and we got to do everything we can to create that environment again. And unfortunately, I don't, I don't want to disappoint some of these people here, but it starts with the students. We're, we're going to sit down, we're going to go talk to fraternities, sororities, we're going to go talk to any sort of student group and get these people back in the stands. It's my job as a basketball coach to put a product out on the court that they're going to appreciate. And we're going to do that. We'll handle that situation. I guarantee you this, every time you come see our team play, there'll be three things that you'll walk away saying. You'll say that that team played harder than the other team. You'll say that team played tougher than the other team. And the most important thing that gets left out a lot of times is that team played smarter than the other team. Every single time that we set foot on the court, you'll walk away saying those three things. And when you walk out of here, you'll say, I want to come watch that team play again. They got quality young men that play hard, that play tough, and that play smart. And they will make sure that they represent this university in the right way every time they sit foot on that court. So we'll get these guys in here, but now we got to get the fans back we want to make sure that we have an uncomfortable environment for the opposing team. It's really important. And the only way we can do that is to make sure that we get the students back and we got to get the fans back. I think we have a community here that is starving for CMO to be good. And it's my job to make sure we feed you. And we're going to do that. Um, the last thing I'll say here is, I built a program over at Mississippi State. I laid down a foundation, and I didn't get a chance to complete my task. There is nobody, nobody in this room that is more hungry to go out and prove himself. And CMO has given me the opportunity to come out and prove myself that we're going to get it done. And I'm looking forward to it, and I know, I know that we will be successful here because we're going to put together the right team, the right staff, and we're going to make sure we're successful here.